Begin by gathering the following tools and supplies. A grinder with a maximum 8th inch thick abrasive cutoff wheel. A drill with any 3 8 or half inch chuck. Isopropyl alcohol. A rag. Pencil. Masking tape. Measuring tape. And caulking gun. If you don't have a grinder, you can use a reciprocating saw with a metal cutting blade and a drill bit the same diameter as the saw blade. To ensure your safety, always wear proper eyewear and hearing protection. Keep your hands clear of blades, grinding discs, and drill bits. If you're not proficient in the use of power tools, you should hire a licensed professional to cut the holes. Every shipping container roof has slight deviations in the corrugated spacing, but for the most part, they're even. Prior to installation, check various locations on the roof to find the best fit. Avoid seams or any place that looks uneven due to warping. Also, test the fit of your 12-inch Whirlybird turbine vent on the universal adapter. It should fit with no gaps or difficulty, sliding the vent over the curb mount. If the adapter does not fit the roof or turbine vent, do not proceed. Contact us, and we will advise you on next steps. Place the universal adapter in the selected area and carefully pencil a line around the outside edge. Make sure the corrugations are centered as best as possible. The universal adapter will conform to the container to seal any minor deviations. Drill a hole into the container in one of the center corrugations. Install a screw. On the opposite center corrugation, drill a hole and install a second screw. This will secure the adapter in place so you can drill all of the remaining holes. After the holes are complete, remove the two screws and move the universal adapter aside, taking note of which way it's facing. The unit should face the same way to match the marked holes. Using painter's masking tape, mask a quarter inch outside of the pencil line. With the supplied abrasive pad, thoroughly scuff the roof from the tape line to at least two inches inward. This will prepare the roof to bond with the adhesive. Use a measuring tape to create pencil marks about two inches inside each side of the taped square. Connect the lines to form an approximately 12 inch by 12 inch square. This will be the hole that you'll cut. If the shipping container has been retrofitted with electricity or gas, check before cutting to avoid wires or pipes. If you don't have a grinder, you can also use a reciprocating blade. First, drill a hole the same size as your blade to start your corners. Then use the blade to follow the lines and cut the hole. We highly recommend using a grinder with an 8th inch max thickness abrasive cutoff wheel. Using the grinder, start your cuts in two corners, then complete the entire hole. Be very careful around the sharp metal edges. Thoroughly clean the surface with isopropyl alcohol to prepare for the next step. Using the supplied adhesive, apply two parallel 3 8 inch thick beads. One bead should be created between the tape and the drilled holes, and the other bead should be directly over the holes. It's important to use enough adhesive to make a good seal. There should not be any thin areas, as water will find its way through. Adhesive should ooze from all edges when the screws are tightened. Using care, center the universal adapter, making sure it's facing the correct direction, and line it up with the previously marked holes. With the screws provided in the installation kit, screw in the mount by first loosely setting screws into the holes. Start with the center corrugations, tightening all the screws halfway, alternating from one side to the next so that the universal adapter seats uniformly. Then fully tighten all screws in the same pattern. Adhesive should ooze out as you tighten the screws. If you have minor visible voids, backfill thoroughly. If installed properly, there will be adhesive visible outside the entire flashing after the unit is screwed down to the roof. To remove excessive adhesive, use a stick or old credit card. Remove the masking tape and apply small amounts of isopropyl alcohol directly to the clean rag, and then wipe the area to be cleaned. Be careful not to pour or puddle the alcohol directly onto the area. This can weaken the adhesive and it may travel under the universal adapter. Now you're ready for the final step. Place your 12-inch Whirlybird turbine vent onto the mount. The screws provided with the turbine vent are self-tapping and can be screwed directly through the Whirlybird mounting holes into the curb mount lip. Congratulations on a job well done. These instructions in the installation video allowed you to successfully and permanently install your universal shipping container adapter. You will experience the benefits for years to come.